us. Our next uh, guest is somebody you've been hearing throughout the four days, Peter Benziger. And Peter's going to do a talk on his seven favorite tools. And some of these tools you've never seen. Um, some of them he's got different uses for, but it's a really cool little talk. So away we go. Let's uh, tee up Peter and get him going. Hello, I'm Peter Benziger, and we're standing in front of Peregrina, our 1990 uh, Tiana 47 cutter rig uh, sailing vessel. And we're going to go aboard now and uh, talk about tools. She's been our home since uh, almost 11 years now, and we have uh, been blessed to have her carry us safely all around the world to uh, 44 countries and uh, sailed around the world on this boat. Uh, here's our track going departing uh, January 5th, uh, 2010 from Miami, crossing the Caribbean Sea, the Pacific Ocean, Australia, Indonesia, the South China Sea, including Thailand, both sides of Malaysia, Borneo, Philippines, down into the Southern Indian Ocean, over to Africa, Namibia, over to Brazil, Suriname, Guiana, Trinidad, uh, Grenada, Venezuela, Colombia, going through the canal a second time and spending about a year and a half, two years coming up to San Francisco, where we're currently berthed in Marina Village Yacht Harbor. Today, I'm going to show you some of the tools that I've uh, uh, considered my favorite tools and uh, some I acquired uh, during the circumnavigation. But um, here are a few of them. Uh, the first one comes from those uh, wonderful people who invented the colostomy, uh, <laughs> colonoscopy. And this is a wireless uh, boroscope, basically. And you can see right now that the pictures will show the camera and Peregrina, there's Margie, and everything is on this boroscope. It goes right onto your cell phone. It's wonderful. Or you can put it onto your computer. These are really useful little tools, and I'll give you a very specific instance. Uh, recently, uh, I had a water leak in uh, my aft water heater. And I couldn't find the hose because it was buried under about 100 and, well, probably 300 pounds of batteries and a 110 pound water tank. And using this, I sneaked it in following the hose and saw that the hose had been compressed by the battery box and a stringer and had cracked. It was impossible to run another hose through there since the, the space available was half the diameter of the hose. But I put a string, tied a string on the end of this and I snaked this around looking for a place and finally found a place and then was able to poke this through into a spot uh, uh, between the battery box and the uh, hot water heater. Too tiny to get my hands on, but then I was able to use my handy gra dandy grabber tool. I don't know if you can see this coming up, but there's a little spring mounted action. And to go down and grab this, which I did, like that and pull it up and uh, with it came the string and the rope and I used that as a leader line to pull through the water hose. So there's a lot of uses for this. You can actually get them uh, with underwater capability also. So if you have something perhaps stuck around your prop, you could stick this on a boat hook or something and push it down under. So this is the boroscope. It's a, a fun little tool. And again, everything goes right onto your cell phone and you can actually record it there or on your computer. And uh, so if you have a problem uh, mechanically and you can get this in, you could even send a little film to a repair expert in the States and ask them, hey, help me, I'm having a little trouble. There's a couple of other neat additions to this. One is that it comes with a little extender hose uh, tube, so you can click this in and use it to push it around. And also, inside these packages are some other little attachments that fit on the end. One of them is a mirror. So you can actually look at a right angle. If you just get this next to it, the mirror will have a right angle uh, there. Margie's walking around making noise. But um, so that's the boroscope and that's a pretty good tool. Another uh, one of my favorite things on the boat is often during the circumnavigation, we would go into areas in which I was very dubious about the, um, the charting and uh, couldn't really 
uh, discern from the, um, uh, the charts, because some of the charts in different parts of the world are really, really bad, and they're actually going back to the 1800s. So they're very poor. And uh, I was nervous about taking Peregrina in because there was nobody around for hundreds and hundreds of miles. So I got this um, little tool, and it's a handheld depth sounder. And so uh, I would uh, launch my little dinghy. Margie would stay on the boat, and I would take the dinghy in, and you stick this in the water and press the button, and uh, it tells you the depth. And so as you find a way in, you kind of remember where you've uh, plotted your, your, your good parts and your bad parts. You take your dinghy back out and you basically lead your big boat in, weaving through the coral heads or whatever. So it's been really wonderful. Uh, it also has a temperature gauge so you can uh, know what the water temperature is. And um, we carry four tanks, scuba tanks, on board Peregrina because often we have to go and clear an anchor or do some underwater work or whatever it is. Me and which wetsuit I should wear. Should I wear a shorty or should I put on a long one or should I put them both on because it's freezing? But uh, uh, it's great for long dinghy trips, for bringing your big boat in and just getting an idea of what the bottom looks like in places where you're not comfortable taking your big boat. Okay, another couple of tools I like a lot. Uh, and. Uh, Here's one of them, and probably some of them, or many of you know about these. These are Multimaxes, and um, they have different cutting tools. This is a, a forward cutting tool, but the nice thing is you can turn this 90 degrees, so if you need to cut something like a hose or a hose clamp at a 90 degree angle, you can do that. These are really good in places where you don't have the space to make a saw uh, pass with your arm. And uh, here's what it sounds like at the different levels. And then it goes up. Oops. Okay. Now, the cool thing about this, you'd think this is a dangerous tool, but it's actually not. Uh, and I can't explain why, but watch what happens. Oops, I should take my gloves off here. Uh, watch what happens when I try to cut my finger with this. No, no blood. But watch when I try to cut this pencil. Boom. So that pencil just went right through. Here's the two pieces. And so you can cut through metals with this. You can cut with plastic, through wood. And um, again, it comes with um, a different uh, cutting blade, which is much larger. So if you need to go in and really cut some, some larger holes, uh, maybe for an electrical box or an electrical connection, you can do that. And the other part I like a lot is that there's a pad. So this becomes a sanding uh, a tool also. And you can get into corners with this. You can go around, uh, put different grade sandpapers on. Uh, it's a really wonderful sanding tool. Uh, it uses less space than a, a, a larger hand nozzle, And it's just another accoutrement. <clears throat> So, that's the, uh, the Multimax. Um, kind of the brother to that. Hey Marge, could I have a Coke, please? Um, it's the Dremel tool. These apparently uh, rotate at 10,000 to 30,000 revolutions per minute. Something very, very large. And again, it has a switch that uh, goes on and off. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. I used to work for Pepsi, so we tried to drink Pepsi. Even though you said Coke. I said go. This has a wire wheel on it. Um, it's wonderful for uh, cleaning any kind of corrosion off aluminum, stainless steel, any use for a wire wheel. And again, sometimes you might have a, a collection of wire wheels that you use with your hand drill, be it electric or a battery. This is going to vibrate 10 to 100 times faster than that. So it, it's really, really efficient. If you want to go in and do a larger surface, they have these small little ones, and you can go vertically and go around like that. Uh, it also has grinding uh, stones like this. It has sandpaper, and you can change sandpapers on them and put them on. Uh, it's got, um, this is one of my favorite ones. It's um, a cutting wheel, 
And I can't tell you the number of times I've had to cut a shackle loose or cut, uh, more commonly, a, a lock loose that either <clears throat> became encrusted uh, or covered with, uh, or I lost the key. But this will just cut it right off. <clears throat> this is a smaller grinding stone, has an angle, and you can, if you do epoxy or fiberglass finishing, and it's a little rough, you can, you can use this to, to get, get it down to a, a smoother place. And of course, it has a polishing wheel too. So if you're doing fine uh, finishing, uh, you can polish. One of the tools you have is a scribing tool. So if you want to use this to write the name of your boat on your outboard engine, in case it gets stolen, then you can uh, identify it or onto your dinghy, you can use it for that. So this is a Dremel. It's a lot of fun. Uh, if you're into handicrafts, it's, uh, it's great also. Okay, um, let's see what's next. Uh, maybe, Margie, why don't you come over and, and, and uh, we'll, we'll give you uh, Margie's perspective on something. It's kind of fun. Take a seat, Margie, and sit pretty close. Here she comes. This is my wife, Margie. Um, uh, she's been with, with me on the boat uh, the whole time around the world. I'm the captain, but you are... I'm the Admiral. She's the Admiral. And your turn. 41 years I've been the Admiral. <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell you a little bit about something we call marriage savers. Um, you'll hear that term among the sailing community. Most people would just say this is a pair of walkie-talkies. But uh, uh, when you live on a boat, uh, uh, these little uh, marriage savers are, are really, that's really what they do. Um, we each way put on a pair of marriage savers, like that, and we use these a lot. Um, there are probably two or three instances uh, that are the most common. Um, sometimes uh, one of us will be driving the boat and somebody will be down in the engine room and we'll use them then. Um, this way you can talk to someone even though you can't see them and they can, um, you can take direction and uh, steer the boat or, uh, you know, do whatever uh, is needed uh, without uh, uh, yelling back and forth, what, 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 um, can't hear you. Uh, the other thing is uh, we use these uh, when uh, somebody has to go up the mast, if you're working on the rigging or um, you're, uh, um, you're entering waters that you don't know and you want to get a better view. Um, this is awesome to uh, uh, use the marriage savers. Someone's uh, up at the spreaders and can uh, direct the person who's driving the boat. Tell them uh, about the two motos. We're in uh, we're in the two motos, uh, which are atolls um, in the uh, in the Pacific, and uh, uh, they're actually so beautiful. But uh, once you enter these atolls, uh, there's not a lot of charts for them. And there's an awful lot of um, bombies uh, or coral heads. Um, so usually it was me, but um, I would go up the mast and direct Peter. Um, you know, when the when the when the sunlight is 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 you know low in the sky, it's really hard to see. So uh, I would uh, get up in the mast and direct him go to port go to starboard um, because uh, the water can be 40 or 50 feet deep in one spot but 10 feet over there could be a bomby there and there might be only uh, two feet one foot so uh, I would uh, I would be directing him uh, um, you know um, go to starboard go to port and uh, it was it was really it was really great um, although I did tend to look like a lobster by the time I got down. Um, and then finally, the, uh, the most common use of marriage savers is for anchoring. Um, I don't know about you, but uh, there are so many instances where we've watched people anchoring um, and it, uh, it becomes very amusing to hear people screaming back and forth and, uh, um, you know, getting angry and, and whatever. And um, 
people usually say, oh, well, you know, we have a set of hand signals. And I, I, I always said, yeah, we always had a set of hand signals, but they would change every time we were doing them. So, you know, sometimes it was this, sometimes it was this, sometimes it was this, it was this. And, and uh, the marriage savers avoid all that. Uh, you can talk in a normal voice. Um, you know, you can have uh, um, your, your, you know, if you have a question, you know, it, it's answered easily and um, it makes for a much more pleasant anchoring experience. So um, I think that's the, app, the story right. of the marriage savers. So marriage savers Thank uh, you. and they're hands free, which is great. And oh, yeah. um, uh, we actually, um, on one of the sets, I don't have it here, we've made a little strap because when I'm up the mast, I don't want them to fall down. But uh, um, they're really nice to have. Yeah. Anyway, marriage savers. Absolutely. Okay. All right. What else is Bye. in the bag of tricks? I guess something I just wanted to make sure everybody had on board, and I know you probably all do, is a multimeter. Um, it, it just is a lifesaver. I know many of you probably have Nigel Calder's uh, book, and if you try to go through the battery and the electrical section, it's, uh, uh, I don't know, 40 or 50 pages and very, very confusing. But getting to new, know the basics of this is, is easy and very important, special continuity testing and uh, voltage and amps. Uh, it becomes um, quite, quite interesting when you travel abroad because uh, uh, most of the marinas around the world are 220. We do have a step-down transformer we installed in Australia here to step down the current to 110. But uh, when you try to plug into the marinas, um, one thing that you find is that all the fittings around the world are totally different, which is why you need a multimeter. Um, but even within a country, look at the size of this electrical fitting. Uh, we have boxes and boxes of different electrical connections on Peregrina, depending on the country. There are uh, many round plugs, uh, many, many different kinds of plugs. And to make things a little bit more complicated, the wiring color code in international is different than U.S. wiring color code. So you have different colored wires. And in, in addition to that, um, often in some of the uh, smaller areas or marinas, they won't use the right colors or even colors that make any sense. So making sure you've, you're able to connect your plugs correctly and everything in the multimeter is great. And of course, hand in hand with that is a polarity tester which plugs into your um, AC outlet here on your boat, and it'll tell you whether the polarity is correct if you don't have one on your master panel. So um, uh, this is one of your, <clears throat> one of your best friends. Um, let's see what else we have. Um, the same way that's important, um, outside the US, um, everything is metric. So make sure you have a, a good caliper there. Uh, I have both uh, an electric caliper and a, a hand uh, plastic one. But um, uh, measuring things in inches may not help you at all in the majority of the world. I think there's only three countries in the world that don't use metric. So um, uh, you start thinking in metric once you're going cruising. And this is your handy, handy dandy guide for that. Um, this is a, uh, another little tool. Um, these are the ratchet wrenches. Let's see if you can hear this. But it allows you to not take the wrench off the nut. And in some of those hard to use places on a, on a boat, this just saves you. Because there are some places you really don't have the space to take it up and go like that. So here, all you do is you can do as little as you want like that. So these are, these are nice little tools also. Um, this is a kind of a strange thing, uh, but um, uh, we were going to go through uh, the canal up into the Med from Asia, and unfortunately our good friends Bob and Phyllis were shot to death by Somali pirates, so we went into the southern Indian Ocean, and we always were worried about our security. We had some security issues in the uh, nine years we were cruising, uh, but um, I was in a racetrack, and getting uh, some beer and hot dogs in the center, and I saw these big girly, uh, 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 burly guys who turned out to be uh, ex SAS British commandos, and they were on board uh, 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 commercial vo boats as protection. And I asked them, "What's your weapons release? And, you know, when can you actually fire your weapons?" And they said, "There's five stages, and the third stage is that they would paint." Um, 
their target with a red laser beam. I don't know if you can see that on me, but we went out and bought some of these and, and we've actually used them. Uh, it's just something to, strange little thing, but I've been very happy to have that on. Okay, um, I think uh, we're down to my favorite tool. And this is uh, something that is, is um, wonderful. It's basically a laser-based uh, thermometer gun, I guess. And again, it has a red light. And you think, okay, that's what's measuring the temperature. It's actually not. That's just an aiming light. They have uh, sensors inside that measure the temperature. The reason these are really good is that um, it allows you to check some of the key operating systems on your boat. For instance, in your either your generator, on my generator, um, I will open the door to look at a reservoir tank that we have, an external reservoir for coolant, and I'll shoot the gun at it. And it'll tell me the temperature, which is say 147 to 180. If it's over 180, I know there's something seriously wrong about to happen with the generator. I also, on the main diesel engine, uh, I shoot these at the heat exhaust elbow, at the uh, heat exchanger, at the thermostat cover, uh, and over time I've developed a set of ranges. And it's, it's not uh, that you have to believe this temperature, but if you take a number of measurements, you'll get an idea of what relative temperature each of these should be, and it'll tell you when things are starting to go bad. And uh, you don't want them to go bad. So this is a wonderful tool, and uh, at the end of the day, when Sundowners is, uh, is, is, is ready, um, I use this to shoot my gin and tonic to make sure that the gin and tonic is cold enough, and uh, I know that I'm ready for a good Sundowners. Well, for listening to uh, my favorite tools, uh, I wanted to just urge you to, as you do cruise, um, you can use your creativity along with these tools. Uh, we made a cockpit uh, light out of a Skippy peanut butter jar here with a uh, LED uh, bulb soldered in the center. And um, I did this because there were no marine stores or hardware stores that sold marine products anywhere. Uh, and uh, it, it, it's la it still works, lasted nine years. Uh, so this is our Skippy peanut butter jar uh, cockpit light. Um, Best wishes, have fun cruising, and we'll see you on down the, uh, down the, the charted path. Hi, I just wanted to come back with two additional tools, and um, I decided to come back because I think they're, they're safety tools. One of the issues we worry about a lot cruising is power management. What happens if we lose all our power or get uh, pooped and get our electric, uh, electric uh, system flooded? Well, we have these very, very uh, large lithium ion batteries. They're, they're, they're very powerful, they have 800 amps, and they will start our diesel engine up to 20 times. Now, they're great for us, but also we've had to go over and help other cruisers who are in trouble or have lost their electricity. Uh, they come with plug-in battery clamps like this, but you can put them in a very watertight box, and if all your electric system goes down, you've still got a way to keep your engines going and do your chart plotters and get basic electricity. Now, in addition to that, and this is a gift uh, Margie, my wife, gave me, uh, basically, these are portable solar panels, and they extend out, and you can put them on your cabin top. Uh, they can plug into cell phones or anything like that, but in addition, they will charge up the lithium battery, so you can keep running um, things, you can help people, and in many parts of the world that are rural, when you anchor, the first thing that will happen with will local people, natives, will come out and ask you to charge their cell phones. So you can use those items either uh, on shore or on your boat to help, help out in that, but they're safety factors. Um, I finished my nautical trivia uh, test um, uh, a little while ago, and then I got a question sent to me, and they said, what does the sun over the yardarm mean? 
And this expression was coined by naval officers to indicate that they were ready for drink. And uh, drinking actually was very important to them. I remembered uh, a little uh, blurb I'd read. And in July of 1798, uh, the US Constitution, which is known as Old Ironsides, uh, left port uh, to go out and have a, uh, a four or five month cruise, did a lot of uh, uh, conflicts and battles. But uh, she left the port with 48,600 gallons of fresh water. They carried 79,400 gallons of rum. The Constitution returned almost six months later, and she had no rum at all, and she had 38,000 gallons of stagnant water on board. So that kind of shows you how important it was. Well, when the sun got over the yard arm in the northern hemispheres, uh, the officers thought it was time for a drink. And so I was thinking about that today in the yard arm. We usually think it's five o'clock. They did it at four o'clock. And I looked around the boat and I found that we actually have something that looks very much like a, a, a yard arm on a boat. And uh, so this is uh, our way of celebrating the end of the, uh, the uh, four days of uh, tonic tuna uh, presentations. And Wayne, um, and everybody else, I'd like to uh, toast you all because uh, Wayne and Gailey and uh, here comes Margie and uh, <laughs> uh, Robert and Kevin and the whole team at Atomic Tuna has done just a wonderful job. Here's Marge. And we'd like to say thank you so much to our, our viewers and also thank you very much to the Atomic Tuna team. So here you go. <laughs> Margie. Bye-bye. Oh, uh, <laughs> <bye. laughs> All right, Peter and Margie, thanks so much. You guys were great. Um, I hope uh, everybody learned a lot from you, had fun with your nautical trivia, and uh, it was just a blast. So oh, good. We uh, had fun. we'll be doing this again, and uh, I'm glad you guys are on our team. <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Right, let's, Bye. Uh, let's give away some more prizes.